Well, man, that was a really long and totally unnecessary intro. Uh, but I just wanted to welcome you to my first official installment of VO2 Max Productions Training Talk Thursdays. And I'm going to try to put out a new informative training talk video every Thursday. So tune in, subscribe for that, and share it. And it's going to be based on your feedback. So feel free to comment below with any future training talk topics that you'd like to hear about. And vote too. Uh, the ones that get a lot of thumbs up will draw my attention and I want to you know, thank you for all the feedback and comments that I've been getting. Um, I haven't been ignoring them. I just haven't seen any with tons of thumbs up yet. So uh, keep them coming and I'll be open to suggestions. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Sage Kande and this is VO2 Max Productions Training Talk. Uh, today we're going to talk about marathon training and more importantly, periodization in your marathon training. Uh, and you know, what is periodization? Well, it's basically breaking your training into phases or different blocks uh, that could be anywhere between four to eight weeks at a time. So it's kind of looking at those blocks of different uh, blocks of training as you go along in your marathon quest and changing little variables within those so that you progress in your fitness and gain speed and strength and endurance uh, all at the right times and you know it could be a very complicated thing but it also is a very could be a very simple thing and obviously with this training talk I'm just gonna barely scratch the surface but if you want to you know check out more things I would recommend uh, Daniel's distance running formula which is where I actually learn about uh, periodization and training at different uh, different paces and intensities and why we do workouts and then also uh, my other favorite marathon book is Advanced Marathoning by Pete Fitzinger Cornell grad, exercise physiologist, and an Olympic marathoner, uh, 1984. Won the 1984, 1984 Olympic trials in the marathon. So, great resources there. Um, but, you know, getting into the nitty gritty of marathon training, uh, we have a certain amount of time to train for a marathon, and we want to break that time into different phases, different weeks. And obviously, most important workout for training for a marathon, I'd say, is the long run. Uh, getting in a consistent long run and if you're starting from scratch from ground zero Maybe you just started running or you're, you took a break and you're getting back into it You can't just go out and run a hard 20 miler as your first long run Maybe you'll have to build your mileage up Maybe your first long run is an 8 mile long run then maybe a couple weeks later you do 10 or 12 miles uh, and build up from there So you're building up a long run um, And then you're gonna have to develop in speed um, but before speed I want to say I'd caution you want to build in consistency in your training and uh, generally this is the first introductory phase of marathon training is you're building your mileage up and you're building your mileage up with slow more easy relaxed paced running and for three to four hour marathoners this could be anywhere between you know a minute to a mile slower than marathon goal pace to maybe a minute and a half uh, per mile slower than marathon goal pace and if you're three hour marathoner or under uh, maybe it's it's closer to two minutes per mile slower than marathon pace and you know four to five hour marathoner you probably could get within a minute per mile of your marathon goal pace but it's really about building up your easy mileage uh, as high as you can basically without getting injured and obviously that's easier said than done but that's kind of where we put you know the emphasis on the first phase is building up the mileage building up the volume because really when you tow the starting line of a marathon or ultra race or even a half marathon a lot of what it comes down to is how many miles have you run in your life uh, what's your lifetime accumulated miles because they all help they make you stronger they allow you to you know transport oxygen around your muscles better so generally the more miles the better and obviously if you're limited with time or concerns about injury you know maybe you're only running 30 miles a week 40 miles a week uh, you know do what you can with the time you have so then you know in the next phases of training maybe we're adding some intensity um, and you know what I mean by adding intensity well if we look at Coe's uh, Sebastian Coe's father was a famous coach but we call it Coe's five pace theory his five pace theory was you should always be doing workouts uh, two paces faster, two notches faster than your goal race pace, and then you got goal race pace in the middle, 
and then you got two paces slower. So say your easy recovery runs are, are is a slow pace. Say maybe your long run is also generally slower than marathon race pace. Then you got marathon race pace. Then you got a notch faster, which would be maybe half marathon to 10K race pace, which is conveniently right around lactate threshold or tempo run pace. And then you got your fourth pace, which could be a sprint, it could be strides, but we'd like to say it's more traditional interval speed work. Maybe it's half mile repeats, quarter mile repeats. Uh, maybe it's a VO2 max workout. And if you don't know what these terms mean, uh, check out my tempo run lactate threshold video here. I'll post it up there. And check out my VO2 max uh, speed training video I'll link to right up there. Um, but basically, you know, we have all these types of workouts we could do. We have this limited time frame and we want to mix all this together uh, to get in the best shape possible. How do we do that? Well, that's that's the you know bread and butter of what periodization is about. And uh, you know Arthur Linear back in the day would train uh, you know with 10 weeks of 100 miles a week base building aerobic phase, and then he'd add in these hill sprints and hill bounding phase to develop specific strength. And you know his athletes would be doing anaerobic all out lactate tolerance uh, workouts. You know stride the straights or sprint the straights, jog the turns around a track. Um, I wouldn't add that many variables into your, into your training plan. Because uh, really with the marathon, what's the most important is having the endurance to hold on after 18 or 20 miles. That's where you make or break your marathon race. And to do that, you need to be consistent in your training, uh, obviously healthy with high, highest mileage that you could handle. Uh, and then also have a really well-trained lactate threshold from doing some tempo runs, maybe some long runs that dip back under marathon race pace, and then also capitalizing on that with some VO2 max type of workouts or speed workouts. And then having efficient running form by doing things like strides, mobility exercises, stretching, uh, and taking care of yourself. So, you know, we look into the middle phases of training, and these could be, you know, four-week blocks or six-week blocks, and you're emphasizing that really quality work of doing tempo runs. Maybe you're doing a tempo run or lactate threshold workout once a week. Maybe you're, and then you start sprinkling in uh, a speed workout or a VO2 max workout. And I've never been a big fan of doing a whole lot of speed VO2 max types of workouts uh, to get in peak marathon shape because I really only think you need about two or three targeted workouts uh, to really hit your peak. And you know. Sometimes for other runners we'll have that we coach, we'll have them do more uh, just to build their efficiency, but it, it kind of depends on the background that you're coming from and that's kind of out of the scope of this uh, training talk video. But you're sprinkling in these workouts and you know, my personal training when I train for the marathon, I usually take two easy days between each sort of quality workout. So, you know, maybe I'm not running exactly on a seven day cycle. A lot of people do because uh, it, you know, works out with their work schedule really well, but maybe I'm running on a nine day cycle. So I'm doing a, a really long, long run every nine days or, or every eight days. Um, but then I'm taking two easy days or a day off and then maybe, you know, take two easy days. Um, I said a day off if you're not running seven days a week, because most people aren't. Um, you know, and, and rest and recover and then do a tempo run and then take two easy days or a day off, rest, recover, then do a, a track interval workout. And that's the kind of cycle, micro cycle that you're following within the whole spectrum of this periodization thing. And your long runs are progressively building so that you get in some good quality long runs. Uh, you're hitting these really hard, pretty, you know, intense long runs that are the longest maybe you've ever run four weeks, five weeks out before your marathon race, even three weeks out, you could be doing some, some pretty hard long runs um, as long as you could handle it. And then you put the icing on the cake by hitting speed again. And you know, since this video is getting really long, I'm gonna you know, address some of the questions people ask, well, what comes first? Is it speed or you know, what's endurance? Well, it's like the chicken or the egg. Uh, you develop speed and endurance kind of simultaneously. And you know, they factor in together to, to help to each other out. So by running higher mileage and by increasing your strength and stamina, you're able to bring out more of your sprinting speed. And then, you know, vice versa, at the end of a long run, maybe you've exhausted your slow twitch muscle fibers, you start activating your fast twitch muscle fibers. And maybe that's gonna help uh, with your efficiency and your, your you know, all out sprinting speed, but probably not your 100 meter dash sprinting speed, probably more like your quarter mile to half mile or mile types of speed endurance. Uh, so they really bring out the both uh, together and you really should be working on 
you know, some element of a long run, some element of a tempo run, some element of all out sprint speed session and some element of VO2 max into your training uh, at all given times, at all given months of the year, it's just what systems emphasized in a certain month or period of training uh, is really the important thing and how you execute those workouts. Because obviously if you start burning up half mile, 800 meter repeats on the track as hard as you could go, uh, and you're doing six by 800 and you're just humming along, but your marathon race is two months later, uh, you're gonna be flooding your system with lactic acid and it's gonna maybe start destroying some aerobic enzymes. So you gotta think about that. Hey, maybe I wanna do those repeat 800s a month before my marathon race. And maybe I wanna do those repeat 800s uh, with more of a full recovery and a little bit slower so I don't develop these high levels of lactate in my blood system. Because uh, really the reason why I'm doing repeat 800s training for a marathon is to develop leg efficiency and turnover and also develop my VO2 max, not to develop my lactic acid tolerance necessarily. And so, um, you know, little variables like that can make all the difference. How much rest you get between an interval, what speed you run these intervals at, and, you know, what speed you run your easy runs at. Are they really easy? Are you recovered? Uh, so things like that, you're always toying with how you execute your long runs. Um, you know, whether you've, you've topped out at a 14 or 15 mile long run training for a marathon, or you're doing 20 to 22 mile long runs. Um, it really matters in what pace you run those long runs at, and whether or not you do a negative split effort where you speed up at the end, which I'd definitely recommend you do for some of your long runs, or you actually hit marathon pace or even half marathon pace in the middle towards the end of a long run when you're already tired, uh, which I'd also recommend doing. But you're not gonna do that every single week. Uh, you're not always gonna be doing a, a 20 mile long run every single weekend unless you're like Frank Shorter or someone. Um, you, it's good to change up sl variables slightly. And you know, you, you view the body as an organism and it, the organism responds to different stimuli. It needs new stimuli to adapt and to evolve and to hopefully progressively get better. So you become a better runner, so you improve. Because uh, you're always looking for that continual improvement and you're looking for consistency. And that's re really what uh, periodization is all about. Uh, I hope you check out those books and check out my other uh, training videos. And feel free to comment below with any thoughts you have or new training to topic ideas. Um, love to hear back from you. Thanks for watching this video and thanks for sharing. And stay tuned for more VO2 Max Productions. Thank you.